<laughs> yeah, we see your screen now. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So the, the book Principles of System Science is uh, published by uh, Springer. And um, I co-authored that with uh, Mike Colton, who's one of my colleagues at uh, the university. And uh, we originally conceived of it as uh, providing curriculum or a basis for curriculum for um, uh, courses in system science. And so going through, it's really, you got five parts. Um, the first part I call system NIST, which is basically just a uh, description of what it means to be a system. Uh, then the, <clears throat> pardon me, then getting into more details called the structural aspects of systems, uh, the prospect aspects of systems, and then getting into some um, larger topics having to do with evolution, um, emergence and things of that nature. And then part five was to look at well, how do we use all this uh, in systems engineering and other practices? Um, so uh, in part one, it's basically an introduction. And we introduced uh, the notion of these principles. Uh, the, our idea was not to try to be too um, concise, if you will, in naming principles or deriving them or whatever, but rather just to get some basic ideas out there. And uh, other people have used, uh, George Clear, for example, his book was called Aspects of System Science. <clears throat> and uh, since that title was taken, we had to come up with something else. So we, we settled on using a principles approach. And um, these got increasingly more detailed and more, um, how shall I say, uh, the, the, the complexity of systems that we deal with increases as we go up this, uh, uh, up this list. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, then this was something that I'm, is gonna be in my new book. Uh, this organizes the, uh, those principles in a way to display that there are certain core principles which um, uh, you know, are true of, of all systems or can be found true of all systems. Um, most of these things are true of all systems, but the, we just settled on that as core principles. And then um, uh, you see there on the right-hand side, it says functional aspects. And on the left-hand side, it says structural aspects. And then above all is the organizing principles, which include what I call auto-organization, emergence, and evolution. So the structural aspect. So this is where we get into uh, things like uh, hierarchy, uh, network, uh, you know, in internal connectivity, and then also connectivity between the system of interest and its environment, the things in its environment. Um, we talk about complexity, and generally speaking, we we um, follow the um, Herbert Simon's notion of um, complexity, hierarchical complexity. <clears throat> and then uh, we talk a bit about uh, behavior using uh, several different approaches, but system dynamics is is one of the main ones. Um, part three is then getting into the process aspects. And here we tackle information, meaning, knowledge, and communications. And I think we did something um, that I'd not seen before in that I differentiate between information and knowledge and, and don't try to conflate those two. So it isn't, uh, for example, DNA doesn't encode information. It encodes knowledge at which, when it gets decoded, uh, becomes information. Anyway, and then uh, since I'm a computer scientist, I had a fairly decent chapter on computational systems, but including not just computers, mechanical, electrical computers, but also biological. 
Um, and then a chapter on cybernetics. So it, building up in this part, building up that you need to have information and computational systems in order to have systems that uh, embody cybernetic principles. Um, Auto-organization is the same thing that everybody else means by self-organization. But I had experience teaching classes to, let's say, naive students who um, I was using the term self-organization. And at some point, and I can't even remember how I got into the discussion, but one student said, do systems have souls? And I said, <laughs> um, what, what, do you, what do you mean? He said, well, you said that they self-organize. And if they self-organize, that must mean they're conscious or they have some kind of intelligence or something like that. And I got to thinking about it and I, I realized the, the name following all scientific conventions previously would have been auto organization. So I, I've used that and I'm kind of sticking with it even though I have to go through that long explanation. Um, and then the chapter on evolution itself. Um, and then systems analysis and how do you model systems and things of that. So that's pretty much it. You want me to leave that up for a bit? Or, well, you said everybody's got these, right? So. Uh, yeah, we have two ways. Which one you guys prefer? One is we do a little discussion and do, do next, or we can present everything and, uh, and uh, do the total discussion. Which, which one you like? Well, I, I have another comment actually. So the two, the other two um, uh, book uh, table of contents you sent out, uh, mm -hmm. those books were about uh, cybernetics, it looked to me like. So the one thing I wanted to point out is that our book was an attempt to integrate across a wide range of uh, phenomena associated with being a system, only one of which was the cybernetics. So there's a lot more in there than just. Um, um, so they are non non cybernetic systems exist. What's that? I, I mean, f to a follow up to what you just said, uh, there exist a non cybernetic system, system without the cybernetic features. Yeah, I think that's, um, I've heard arguments both ways that actually um, you can take an atom, for example, and the, the behavior of the uh, electrons in the shell so show some aspects of feedback, especially when they get kicked out by a photon or something. But I, yeah, I, I, would, I would say, well, yeah, we can leave it at um, more complex systems. Jason, further yes. fair, I prefer the option of um, going through all three talks and then having a kind of total discussion, if that's all right. Okay, of course. Uh, there is one clarification, I think. You mentioned, uh, George, you mentioned the, the, as a textbook, the, this book as a textbook. So to what level of the students? Uh, this oh, um, <clears throat> good point. Yeah, we were thinking mostly of um, uh, senior level classes, possibly in support of engineering programs where they wanted to have some graduate uh, graduate level. Well, uh, it could it, it currently is being used in graduate level courses. Okay. We had we had thought more in terms of senior level, at least. Uh,